morning and happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us today at Trinity Episcopal Church in Marshall, Michigan. My name is Mother Ann Schneer, and I'm so glad you could be with us today. Uh, we are very excited to have more people with us today. Unfortunately, not the whole congregation, but we have more ministers with us. Uh, so uh, on camera with me are Deacon Wendy Pearson and Todd Kaminsky, who is my server and reader today. And we have some additional people that are here to help with responses and singing. Um, we appreciate how difficult it is to be celebrating this very, very holy festival day from home. Uh, but we do really appreciate everyone who is practicing distance, wearing your masks, so that we can all do our part to fight this COVID-19 virus. Thank you so much for your patience and for your diligence and your discipline. Um, today is the day that we are trying curbside communion. So that means after this service from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m., I will be out in front of the church uh, uh, prepared to distribute the consecrated sacrament uh, in wafer style only uh, to anybody who drives up. So I do hope that following our worship together, if you're in the area, that you will come and uh, receive the sacrament. Uh, thank you again so much. Please continue to be disciplined and wear your mask and do all of those things if you know uh, help fight this virus. Uh, and uh, re you remain in our prayers as we all try to move forward to the day when we can all be together again. We will now continue with the prelude played by Randy Turpin. <laughs>
risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich foods, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, 
this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and let us rejoice and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please read along with me. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me, and it become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our hearts. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Second reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John, announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on a but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. At this time, I'm going to invite the altar party and the people sitting in the choir stalls to move forward into the congregation. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we begin, I feel prompted to acknowledge uh, this sort of elephant in the room, which is much smaller than an elephant, it's this camera, but it's this miracle of technology that helps us to connect with you folks who are at home. Uh, and I'm struck by this awkward silence uh, that, that goes along with the shuffling of the people uh, where the altar party and the singers and our responder all go further away from me so that I can preach without a mask. Hi, Todd. <laughs> and you can't see this because, of course, the camera's pointed this way. We have, let's see, two, four, six people in this, uh, this beautiful house of God that can hold about 240. And there are two people on that side, and they're like at the front of the church and the back of the church. There are four people on this side, and they're sort of like a diamond, all very spread out. And I'm reminded of how just about everything that we do liturgically has some sort of practical root. And I'm curious to see what is going to spring out of this season of COVID, COVID tide, as we sometimes call it, uh, because there are these awkward moments where normally you would have silence between the gospel and the sermon because everybody's supposed to be sitting there pondering really hard what the gospel was just about and anticipating what the preacher is going to talk about. But now we have this gap where people are shuffling and we'll have another gap where people are shuffling back, including me, to go retrieve my mask um, in preparation for the renewal of our baptismal vows. So it'll be very interesting to see what the church looks like a yeah, hundred years from now and what habits are still hanging on uh, from this time, much like uh, our tradition of having uh, at least two candles in the altar area. Um, because uh, as I was taught when I was a child, um, the, the candles represent the humanity and the divinity of Christ. And actually, that's a beautiful idea, and we can certainly think about candles that way, but really you had candles, one on each side, so that you could read without casting shadows. So there are these practical things that took on theological meanings as the church developed. And we see the roots of this very, very early church and how humble they are at the start. 
in our gospel story today. We have the women who are going to perform their duty to, to uh, dress and wash and anoint the body of Jesus. They're on their way to the tomb as an act of faith because they have heard about this stone. They don't know who is going to move the stone for them, but they know that they have a job to do. And they are going forward in hope, maybe with some sort of pessimism. I, I, I would suspect that maybe somewhere in that group of women, someone was saying, well, we're going to get there, and the stone's going to be there, and we'll have to walk back. <laughs> That's very possible. But this, this practical and ceremonial urge they have to care for the body of their dead loved one. And they go, and they find that nothing is as they expected. They go and they receive a message that he is not dead, but he is risen. And they don't know what to do with that. It's problematic. They, they run, they don't tell anyone because they are so afraid and astounded by what they have seen and heard. And this ending to the gospel is the original ending. It was such a problem that they had to editorialize later and say, well, yeah, eventually they did go back and tell people because we know about it. If they had never told anyone, then we wouldn't have heard about it at all. But I love that we still have preserved this moment of fear and failure, even in this act of faith for the women. That they go, they see, they are told, and they run away. And then after, later, untold, we don't really get a play-by-play -play of how those conversations went, not in this gospel. Then they proclaim. And it was such a problem that someone had to go back and add an addendum to this gospel and say, well, I mean, yes, they obviously did it, so i got to change the ending. And there's a little bit of fan fiction that made it into the gospel later and continues to be published as an alternative ending to Mark. <laughs> but today we have that being the end of the story thus far. And isn't that beautiful? Isn't it wonderful as, as a testament to human ingenuity and change and God's ultimate creativity, that God can take everything of this, this horrible last holy week, this time where we saw Jesus arrested, betrayed, abandoned, convicted wrongly, crucified, that God can take that and with those raw materials, those awful, terrible, shameful raw materials, create a family. Make you and I, even though I don't know who's watching, I mean, I know you guys, I know the six of you, but you who are watching from home, or on your phones, or your tablets, or watching this sometime in the future, and I have no idea who you are, that you and I are family, that I am your sister, you are my brother, sister, or sibling, and that we love each other, even if we've never met, because we've taken vows to honor each other, vows that are, are in the foundation of God's love for us, because God loves us so much that he did all that stuff, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life, right? Boom. We know that. But God loved you and I so much. God loved y'all, you six people, well, plus our tech desk guy and our organist, I guess eight people, loved us all so much that all of that Holy Week stuff happened so that we could be bound together in God's love. God loved us too much to leave us alone. God loved us too much to let us just be ourselves. God loved us so much that God had to move us toward 
the death of all the bad in us so that something glorious and holy could be resurrected. God loves us so much that we are being made new. So today, the question is, what is resurrection to you? We've had this journey already. We've seen what the love of God has done. We've seen what love looks like as we've watched Jesus do all of those loving acts that led him to the cross. We've seen from last night during the Easter Vigil that that love is not just love for love's sake and isn't that nice, but it's a powerful love, a love that defeats the grave, a love that transcends death, that this love is something that means something and has the power to back it up. So today, the question is, in the resurrection, what does that look like to you? That love plus that power equals resurrection, but what does that look like in your life? What in you has died or is dying? What in you is being resurrected and made new and beautiful and wonderful and powerful and holy? What is God calling you to do in the resurrection next? I saw a, a cartoon last night online. And it was just, it was like the old political cartoons that, you know, remember newspapers? <laughs> you used to get them. <laughs> and some of you may still get them. But it was just like a little one frame thing. And it was a butterfly in a car that had gotten pulled over by the police. And the police officer was looking at the driver's license. And the butterfly said, well, that's an old picture. And the driver's license picture was a caterpillar. <laughs> what is new to you? Who do you need to forgive that the old you, the old you that has died, couldn't possibly imagine forgiving? Who does the resurrected you need to forgive? What apologies as the resurrected you do you need to make? What tasks as the resurrected you are you called to take on? In a moment, we're going to renew our baptismal vows, and that is a way of speaking out loud what the mission and ministry of God calls us to do. And we say that out loud because, in a way, it's speaking things into being. Because Jesus is, after all, the Word made flesh, that Word that existed before time existed, the Word that was spoken and made all things that have being, that creative Word that when God spoke, when God said, let there be light, the Word were the words, let there be light. The Word made flesh. That word calls us to speak words in a moment that change us, that call us into new being, so that when we talk about seeking and serving Christ in all others, we find that somehow we have the strength and the power to do that, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, even when we don't want to. <laughs> because we're promising with our voices that form words. That when we talk about respecting the dignity of every human being, we're not doing it because every human being has earned it. And we're not doing it because we're so wonderful that we're great at giving respect. We're doing it because God made us and God made them. That God redeemed us and God redeemed them. That in God, there actually is no us and them. So when we give someone respect, it's not because they've earned it or because they're so great, but because we are one. And that helps us transform conversations that are difficult. It helps us admit when we're wrong. It helps us repent of institutional sins that started long before we were even born. But it helps us all work together to build a healthier, happier, 
more wonderful, more holy, more glorious human family. But when we talk about striving for the justice of every human being, that's what we do. And the women are here to remind us also, even in this original ending, that those times that we fall, those times that we fail, those times that we say, I can't, I'm too scared, or I'm too angry, or I'm too wounded, that even in those darkest moments, God still loves us completely, utterly, wholly, holily. <laughs> that even those times that we feel the deepest shame of falling short, God bears that sacrificial, self-emptying love for us. And God loves us too much to leave us alone. But God takes us and breaks us and remakes us so that those darkest moments are not the end of our story. And they surely don't define us because God has already defined us. <laughs> God has already said, you are my son, you are my daughter, you are my child, and I love you. And I will die for you. Not only that, I have died for you and I have defeated death by doing so. I have been raised for you, so now let's get to work. So, the next thing that we're going to do is proclaim the vows of our baptismal covenant together. Now I'm going to invite the, uh, the folks that are sitting in the pews to come forward again. And in breaking with our COVID tradition, I'm going to ask everybody to read the responses. Usually we have a designated person so we don't get confusing for the people at home. We're not open yet, unfortunately. But we'll get there. But today... I want you at home to have an audible reminder of this human family that we're part of. A reminder that you can internalize through your ears that you are not alone. And that those days that you fall and falter, that there are others who are strong in that moment, and there are times when you are strong and you need to be strong for someone else who is failing. Because that's community. So, I'm going to take a moment, get my mask back on, take a sip of water, not in that order. <laughs> and as I do that, I'm going to invite the folks to come back forward, and we will continue with the renewal of our baptismal vows. He is risen. Happy Easter, my friends. I'm going to have Todd stand over there by my normal spot. And Deacon Wendy, yep, you're in the right place. So that you have a visual reminder as well as an audible reminder of this community of God. And you'll have to listen for the other voices that are behind the camera. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Family of God, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I 
believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent? and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for our standing committee, Skip, our assisting bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those on our continuing prayer list, Dolores, Joe, Suzanne, Mary, Mary Ellen, Lauren, David, Robin, Carlos, Dave, Debbie, Chuck, Ann, Julie, Barb, Lee, Ruth, Jane, Dave, and Gloria, Jim, Tom, John, Lori, Alec, Brittany, Terry, Bryce, Cassandra, and family, Gary, Leslie, Michael, Pat, and family, Audra, Rod, Mac, those affected by the shootings in Atlanta, Boulder, and Virginia Beach, the people of Yemen, and the Dillon family. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Bev and Cindy, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord,
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 <laughs> it's so weird not to go give hugs. <laughs> Oh, um, as we move into the next uh, piece of our worship service today, uh, I want to just highlight a couple little uh, details. You, you all can be seated. You at home, you're probably already sitting. <laughs> so what's going to happen next is the Eucharistic prayer um, by which the body and the blood of Christ are, are consecrated. The, the bread and the wine become the body and the blood of Christ. Uh, because of uh, our restrictions with COVID, there are a few things that uh, you will you might notice that are a little different than usual. First, I have the liturgical hand sanitizer that is up on my credence table over there, so you will see me use that first. Also, um, we are we've been told that we should have as few people touch the elements as possible, and so that means that my server Todd will be restricted to ringing the bell and washing my hands, but I will be grabbing my own things off the credence table. So you liturgy buffs out there, don't think Todd is dropping the ball. <laughs> um, so then we will, I will remain masked. Uh, you will also notice uh, that I will receive the wafer and uh, the wine myself. Um, what we've agreed on as, as this worship community who is physically here present, um, anybody who is to receive the sacrament um, today will receive it afterward um, at the same time that the folks, hopefully lots of folks are coming uh, to, to line up in their cars on 101 East Mansion Street to come forward and receive communion in that very unconventional um, receiving line. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, so remember that you are, are welcome and encouraged and, and invited warmly to come and receive the bread um, I will be distributing the bread with tongs while I am masked out on the street um, into your car. So you can pull up. I'll reach into your window with my mask on, uh, with the tongs to, to uh, give you the host. Um, and then uh, we'll just see how that goes. If it goes well, we'll keep doing it. So uh, if everybody behaves and we have no traffic accidents, then um, maybe this is a new thing that we can keep doing at Trinity. Um, but I will be out there until 11 o'clock this morning to make sure there's ample time for people to drive over uh, from their homes where uh, hopefully you've been watching um, the, the service. Um, in order to complete the, the Eucharistic prayer, I do need to receive the bread and the wine, so I will be doing that on camera, but that will be the only uh, person receiving it during this particular time and space. Um, following the sacrament, though, uh, sorry, following the consecration, um, you will notice, though, that we'll have a time of uh, reflection and, uh, and praise where the bread and the wine will be uh, available for viewing on the altar. Uh, we will say a special prayer of spiritual intent, um, and we'll have a time of singing. Uh, we'll have one hymn so that you at home, who, whether you're coming here afterward or not, will have the opportunity uh, to, to view uh, the elements and reflect on everything that Christ has done for all of us. Um, so we invite you to that time of spiritual communion as well. Um, again, this is kind of an experiment. We're learning as we're going. So um, please make sure that you um, 
uh, comment if you would like to on the Facebook or the YouTube feed, uh, or send me an email at the, at the church email address, uh, and we'll continue to try to adjust things as we go. Thank you so much. Um, so we will continue now with the offertory sentence and the offertory anthem played by Randy Turpin. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. You may. 
complete all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Conquest. Throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup physically and spiritually may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance of Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now we have the prayer of spiritual communion, as is found on your screen. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanks. 
thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all the love of my soul. Let nothing ever se separate you from me. May I live in you, and may you live in me, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, Amen. now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made his, us his children, through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us all and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.